So I made a video a while ago where I tried shimming a bicycle fork in order to fit a crown race that was loose. And when I was filming that, I didn't know why the crown race was loose. And since then, I've learned that there are two sizes of crown race, 26.4 millimeter and 27 millimeter. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to fit a crown race the DIY way, which I kind of have done before, but I just wanted to do it again. Um, and also I'm gonna show you how to tell if you have a 26.4 or a 27.0 uh, crown race. So the first thing we're gonna do here is get this fork out of the bike, which by the way is a Trek 520 touring bike. And uh, I'll show you all the tools you need and everything. This is very basic DIY, you don't need too many fancy bike tools. You can build all the stuff yourself. I do have a video about it, um, but we'll get the fork out and um, then I'll show you the differences between the 26.4 and the 27, how to tell, and we'll replace the headset. So let's go ahead and get this bike apart. Right, so after taking out the wheel and disconnecting the brake, you wanna get a usually six millimeter Allen key and uh, remove the stem. By the way, this is for a, a threadless headset, uh, sorry, a threaded headset. Threadless headsets is a totally different animal. This is if you have a uh, threaded headset which has this kind of stem that just slides in and out of the fork. I have a video on that as well. Now in this case I just had to loosen that and it came out but if your stem is stuck you want to get a hammer and just hit that um, the top of that little nut and then you'll be able to pull the stem out because there's a wedge in here that gets drawn up as you tighten the bolt and that can get stuck and to loosen that you just hit uh, hit the top. Don't loosen this completely because you'll take the uh, the bolt out of the wedge and you'll never get you'll never get your stem out again. You'll never be able to find that hole again. So just loosen it a little bit, tap it, pull the stem out. Okay now the next step depends on your exact headset and the configuration of your bicycle but you normally have two nuts tightened against each other onto that uh, threaded steerer tube. In this case the bottom nut is obscured by this reflector so I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the top nut. Actually, this is easier with the wheel in the bike. Um, so I guess you can do this before you take the wheel out, but I didn't. So I'm gonna see what size wrench I need. Uh, that's the wrong tool. This one, I think it's a 32. Usually they're either a 32 millimeter or a 36 millimeter. So this is a headset wrench. I'm gonna use that if I can here. This really is easier with the wheel in place. <laughs> I might have to put it back. Oh, nope, there we go. Uh, the wheel obviously gives you extra leverage, but you can use your headset wrench. Uh, something like my favorite tool, the pliers wrench, um, a 32 millimeter open ender wrench. Uh, you know, you get the idea, an adjustable wrench, whatever. Um, but you wanna take off top, top cap, any little spacers and whatever else is there, that should just kind of come off. Uh, there is a little washer. Sometimes these washers are stuck. This one's coming off. It's a notched washer. There's a little notch here that fits just a certain way. That comes off. And then you want to undo uh, your bottom threads. This one is, again, a 32 millimeter. And again, normally it's a 32 or a 36. Um, could be a 35 or a 30 as well. And some weird ones have weird star shapes and stuff. But anyway, you want to loosen your bottom cap. And in this case, you can't really see, but I'm gonna hold the fork from underneath. Let's move that into frame. And undo the bottom cap. And my bearings in this case are stuck inside that little, um, uh, that little bearing cup. And then pull out your fork. And in this case, the bearings are stuck in the bottom cup and here we have the crown race. So we're mainly concerned with the crown race here, but uh, I'm gonna show you how to take this whole thing apart. Um, I guess, actually let's start with the frame just cause it's here in frame. Um, so I'll show you how to DIY remove uh, these little cups. Okay, I'm just gonna grab the bearings out of the bottom cup just with a pick. You can use your finger, you can use whatever. They're actually trash, I'm gonna just throw them in my scrap metal and miss and hit the floor. And now we need to get 
these, uh, the bottom uh, cup and this top race or cone out of the frame. They're pressed into place. The actual tool is a thing that kind of slides through the head tube and then you hit it with a hammer and you can push that cup out. But I'm going to DIY that using uh, a punch. You can also, in a pinch, use something like an Allen key, some kind of uh, strong metal tool of some sort, maybe even a screwdriver. You just want to make sure you don't damage the frame. So the best thing to do is go in from the inside. And if you look down in there, you'll see a little lip, which is the inside of the cup. Sometimes there is a stronger piece of the frame there and you might just be tapping that. We're going to tap this with a hammer. So you have to kind of make sure that you can get at the actual cup from the inside. And you might not be able to see that, but if nothing moves, that's your problem. In that case, you can go from the outside, but you want to be extra careful because you can damage the paint. But I'm going to try the inside first. So I'll get my uh, little uh, punch in there. I'll get a hammer. And I'm just going to tap that thing. And I'm going to alternate between the front and the back of the cup just to um, make sure that I'm applying, applying even force here. And I think that thing is moving. And my lower cup fell out. So now I need to do the same thing with this top race. You could turn the frame upside down. I'm going to try and just do it like so. You want to obviously not miss and hit your frame or your finger. So I'm very carefully going to just hit that. I'm going to hit the, just the one side just till it moves. You know, in this case, uh, I think that is going to move. Let's try again. And yeah, that's definitely moving now. It just takes a minute to break that thing free. Um, what you can do is you can kind of put it in like that so that the top of the tool is against the inside of that uh, crown race. The bottom tool is kind of wedged against the other side and hold it in place that way. This thing's about to pop out, so whoops. And you just want to keep alternating, obviously, but... And there we go. Obviously that one is easier if you turn your frame upside down. But now this is all good to go. I'm just going to clean that in a minute. Um, but I'm going to show you first. Uh, actually, let's just prepare this while we're here. So actually, I don't have any rags. So I'll show you the fork and then we'll clean everything, prepare it. And I'll explain the difference between those two crown races. Okay, so now what you want to do is turn your fork upside down on some kind of non-marring surface. Something like a piece of wood is ideal. In this case, I actually just have a rag and then some thick cardboard. So hopefully this fork won't punch through that. And then you're going to want to tap the crown race from the outside carefully with your punch. In this case, it's tricky because I have this uh, fender in the way and you can damage the paint. So you want to just go just on the edge of the crown race. I don't know how you can see that but you want to just go there without touching the paint here or here on the fork leg. So it kind of is easier with two people, but you can do it with one. So I'm just going to actually rest it against that fender. Let's see how I can, this shouldn't be that hard to get out. Let's see if I can just rest that somehow in there. And then I can see it's already moving. So I'll do the other side. Now I got the break in the way. Let's try in here. I'm just going to kind of use my finger to protect the fork. Let's see here. I guess I could use a rag. Um, now nah, let's live dangerously today. Let's see. I 
going to do that. You kind of need to protect everything at the same time. Right there is good. No, I'm going to get a rag and kind of hold the fork that way just because I don't want to mar that thing. All right, now the tool is sliding against the rag. I know you can't really see the bottom of it, but that's because I need to hold it against that crown race or on top of it. And, oh yeah, that's really moving. So let's just keep going around. Take your time, obviously. You don't want to damage anything. I guess I can kind of slide it against my skin here. It's so close to just popping off of there. And there we go. Crown race fell off. The actual tool is like a pincer thing that pin pinches underneath and then you slide a hammer up and it pulls it off that way. Uh, or maybe there's a way to hit it. Or actually, I think it, it, it wedges it off somehow. But this DIY way works totally fine. You just need to take a bit of care and uh, just use some patience. Okay, so the part I just took off the fork is this, which is the crown race. And again, there are two sizes, 26.4 millimeter and 27 millimeter. And one thing that's very important is that it's not just the crown race that's different, but the entire headset is different. Um, but they are determined by the diameter of this inside part of the crown race. I've made that mistake quite a few times where I replaced a crown race only and found out that the rest of the headset was different. Um, so you want to keep your new headset complete in one piece. But there are a couple ways, you have a couple options now for how to replace this thing or how to size this thing. One is you can measure the inside using some sort of a caliper like this. This is uh, an analog one. I like this one very much. And that is just over 26 millimeters. So this is probably a 26.4 millimeter crown race. The other option is to try both headsets. So you can either take your fork to a bike shop and they'll be able to, um, should be able to give you one of each and you can try it out, or depending on how good of a shop it is, or you can order both headsets. Headsets are not that expensive. You know, try one and then resell the other one or use it on another bike or whatever, but that's more of a pain. It's probably better to try and measure this or take it to a shop. But let's get the uh, new headsets I bought and we'll see if I was right with the 26.4. Okay, so I actually have both headsets here. Uh, these are Tangaseki headsets. They're very common on eBay. They're about $14 each. This is a 26.4. This is a 27. I'm assuming I have the 26.4. And by the way, it's very hard to know based on the frame which one you have. They, they say that the 27 is normally either low-end bikes or Japanese bikes, but it's, it's, you can't really go by that because you, you'll be totally surprised. Um, but the 26.4 is kind of the normal size. The 27 is more the Japanese size. Um, but I measured it just over 26. So let's try the 26.4. And again, the, the best way to tell is just to try it. So uh, the headset, you know, will come with all the pieces, all the bearings, all the races. And you don't want to mix this with the 27 because the parts are all totally different. Like I said, it's not just the crown race. Um, but in here, I have a little package of goodies. Um, we should find the crown race, which is, which one is it? This piece right here. This black piece. And I'm going to just slip that onto the fork and see how tight it is. Okay, so slipping on the 26.4 crown race. And basically, there's a little part at the bottom that's a little wider. That's where the crown race sits. And this kind of goes on a little bit by hand, but not completely. Um, I'll have to force that on using a DIY tool, which is a PVC pipe. I'll show you that in a sec. Um, but just as a point of comparison, I'll put the 27 on this fork and show you what that looks like. So here's the 27 millimeter crown race. And if I slide that on, you can see that I can basically push it all the way to the bottom of its seat uh, without any force. So this is clearly the wrong size. So although it's only 0.6 of a millimeter, if you need a 26.4 millimeter headset and you uh, slide on a 27, it'll basically just slide to the bottom. If you do the opposite, if you need a 27 and you have the 26.4, uh, 
you won't be able to seed it no matter how hard you hit that thing. The tolerances are that tight. Uh, so here, the 27 again, just totally sliding on. So in this case, I need the 26.4. There are some options if you have the wrong headset, but they're pretty cheap. So the best thing to do is get the correct one. Um, it's kind of out of the scope of this video, but it's possible to shim uh, a 26.4 fork to fit a 27. And it's possible to file down a 27 to fit a 26.4. You can also actually, um, there's a way of dimpling I think it's the crown race um, to make it better fit, uh, to make a 27 better fit 26.4. Um, but really you're better off just buying the proper headset, going to a bike shop, getting the proper one, measuring it, um, whatever you need to do. Uh, but now let's go ahead and install the headset, uh, the crown race, uh, the headset cups and cones that go into the fork, uh, into the frame and put this thing back together. Okay, so I'm gonna fit the crown race onto the fork first because that's kind of what we were talking about. So I'm just gonna kind of clean this area off a little bit. In this case, it's not really very dirty, um, but I'm just going to give that a bit of a wipe down and then grease it up a little bit. And you can almost use whatever kind of general purpose grease you want. This is just some Park Poly Lube, uh, which is kind of standard bicycle grease, but you can really use whatever you want. It's not that important. I just want to kind of go around. <laughs> I'm really making a mess of this, but um, man, getting everywhere aside from the crown race seat. I'll just wipe away some excess. And then we're gonna seat the crown race. So this is the 26.4 again, slide it on. And if you don't have a proper crown race setting tool, you can use a piece of one and a quarter inch PVC. Get this at any hardware store, hold it down. It'll be off camera, but just hold it down there. You know, however you want. Then get yourself a hammer, get yourself a hammer and you know, a mallet's better, but hit that a couple times. And that should have set the crown race. If there's a gap, just hit it a couple more times, but that's now set in place. Now we're going to do the bearing cups. Okay, so after wiping down the inside of the head tube, um, you just want to get some grease again and just sort of grease up the inside of both the top and the bottom of the head tube. You don't really need too much. It's just to help seat uh, the headset parts. And then you're, you're going to need some sort of a bearing press. If you don't have a real one, which is a very expensive tool for some weird reason, you can make your own for about $10. Uh, this is just some threaded rod, two washers. These happen to be pretty thick, but whatever washers you have and a nut on each end. And that's gonna press the headset cups into place. Make sure you put the right cup in the right place. So actually the cup goes on the bottom. It's flared outward. So put that through your tool and then the uh, top race goes on the top. In the Tangay ones, they're, it's black, but it's this uh, wedge-shaped circular piece. Carefully put that through. Down like so. Washer on top. Thread on <laughs> the nut, obviously. All right, now get yourself some tools to tighten down this top nut. So I'm gonna just hold the bottom one here with just a pair of pliers, and then we'll just start tightening the top one. You do wanna try and keep this as straight as possible, but it's always gonna go in a little bit crooked, and then it'll straighten out as you tighten. I'm just gonna open that a little bit. Yeah, much easier on my hands. A real one of these will come with a built-in handle, but this works just as well and it's probably a tenth of the cost. So unless you're doing headsets every day, I wouldn't bother buying the tools because the DIY ones really do work just as well. I'm just gonna loosen it off. It seems like it is going in a little bit 
very crooked. I'm just going to have to keep going for it, I guess. There we go. And when it's tight, it'll be really tight. You won't be able to turn this thing anymore. I'll just give it another, just to be sure. And then, without scratching the frame, carefully loosen it off again. You do want to be careful, especially with a nice frame like this, because obviously you could slip, scratch the frame. Uh, so you want to take your time. But uh, that is now the... Um, uh, I always forget if it's a cone or a race or a cup or whatever it is, but I'm going to call this thing the top race is in place and the uh, lower bearing cone is also in place. So just remove the tool and then we'll be able to uh, put the headset and the bike back together. Okay, I've just wiped this down a little bit. I'm going to clean it again later on. Um, but these headsets will come with different kinds of seals. In my opinion, the seals don't do very much, but you can try and figure out which seal goes where. So uh, one will go at the top. I think that looks like it fits nicely at the top. So it's the bigger seal. And this smaller one must be for the crown race. So I got the fork here and it's really hard to tell. I think that's correct. So the lower one goes with the wide part towards the bottom and the top one also goes with the wide part towards the bottom, I think. But again, if you don't have the seals in there or you break them or something, it's not the end of the world. So we'll put the fork carefully aside. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is figure out which way your bearings go. So these headsets will come with uh, two sets of bearings which come in these retainers and they go with the balls touching the, uh, the cups. So in the case of the bottom bearing, you have your balls pointing up and the retainer facing down and it slides in like so. And for the top race, you have the retainer facing down and that will smoothly slide there. And then our top cup will touch those bearing balls. So in order to install this and put this whole thing together, you first wanna grease uh, your cups very, very well. So I'm gonna just use a tube. If you have a little grease gun, that's better, but a tube is ideal because it's clean, uh, open grease can get contaminated, but just squirt a nice layer of grease all around the inside of that headset. Okay, so I've got a nice layer of grease on the inside of that cup. It's definitely better to have too much than too little. And then I'll stick one of the bearings with the balls up into that cup. And now I'm just gonna completely cover that bearing with grease. So I'll go all around and just make sure all those balls are greased up completely. And then we'll kind of do the same thing at the top. I'm just gonna run a little grease first along this uh, top race. I'll get the seal back in and put the bearings on retainer side down, like so. I think my seal's upside down. There we go, like so. And then I'll try and, you can either try and grease this as it is or grease the uh, top cap. I guess I kind of do both. Let's grease that a little bit. And then we'll take this, um, not top cap, but this upper uh, cup. And I'll fill that in with some grease as well. Like so. Grab your fork. Shove it through. Carefully. And the seal. <laughs> these seals are so easy to break because they'll get caught in the cup, they'll get damaged, but you wanna make sure your seal is in place. The top seal is still there. 
and then thread the um, top cup onto the steerer tube. And you can sometimes do this by hand, sometimes you need a tool. This doesn't get tightened all the way. We're going to have to adjust this. But um, we're just going to get this, you know, kind of snug. So hopefully there isn't too much play in the, um, the fork. And that's good enough for now because this will get adjusted again once we have the tire in. Now we're going to have to get enough spacers to make up this gap. So the headset came with the uh, top cap here. And there's another little seal, a little rubber piece there. The bottom or inside of that rubber piece should fit against the top of this threaded part. So you can kind of hold this in place and see <laughs> there's quite a big gap there. So I'm going to have to find some spacers. I might just have something lying around here, but this is where it's really good to uh, hang on to the um, old, uh, you know, headset spacers and any of your old pieces because the headsets are all a little different. They're different heights and you're going to want to make up that gap. So let me try and find some spacers and we'll put this thing together. I also do need to get that uh, reflector back into here, wherever that is. Um, and we'll try and make up that gap and screw on the top cap. I guess it's kind of self-explanatory from now, but we'll just go through the process. So stay tuned if you want to watch me finish putting this thing together. So I just have this jar of old headset spacers and lock rings and other headset parts. And I was able to find a couple of uh, these one inch spacers. And then I also found this thicker spacer, which is the shim off of a crane um, bicycle bell. That's a little bit too much. So let's try some of these other spacers. I'll put just this one, I think it's a, what oh, it is a notched spacer? We'll fit that. I'll try putting the reflector on, which I need because this is also the cable guide for the cantilever brakes. Otherwise I'd probably leave that off. There we go. I wanted a spacer underneath just so I can reach that top cap with a wrench. Uh, and then I've got another little spacer plus the actual spacer from the new headset. Uh, I think I'll try this new spacer. And the top cap. And that should be, that looks pretty much perfect. Uh, if you don't have enough spacers, you can go to your local bicycle co-op or to your local bike shop, or you can buy these online, um, or you can use parts off your old headset. So definitely save those spacers. They'll probably come in handy. Uh, but now I'm just gonna thread on that top cap. And then to tighten this up, we're gonna need uh, a headset wrench on this bottom nut. This is where you will need the actual headset wrench because it's thin enough. So uh, let's see, is it a 36? Probably the 32 again. Yep, it'll barely fit underneath that reflector. Get yourself a nice big adjustable wrench of some sort and then you can tighten up your headset. And I'm just going to demonstrate this because the next step, <laughs> well, first of all, I got my wrench stuck in there. It should be okay. Hmm. You know what? This is where things get a little bit tricky. What I'm gonna have to do is do this without the bottom wrench. So I'll just tighten that to where I want it. For demonstration purposes, um, I'm just gonna do this without the wheel in place. This is actually easier with the wheel in and the bike on the ground, but 
they're everywhere. I don't really want to do that right now. So I'm just going to demonstrate and assume that's where I want it. Then grab your top wrench. And actually, if you're careful enough, your bottom nut or your top cup won't move as you tighten that top nut. And then you want to fully tighten it. And that is our headset installed. Again, you're going to have to go through and adjust this. So I probably have a video on this. If not, you can easily look this up. Basically, you put your wheel in, put it on the ground. Um, and you want this bottom cup to be tight enough to where this doesn't rock when you apply the brakes, but loose enough to where the um, fork or the wheel, I mean not the wheel, the fork or the handlebars will freely rotate. And then you tighten up that top nut. So that's the procedure for replacing a headset. I guess I'll just put in the handlebars just for uh, complete this here. Just wipe that down. Get yourself some grease. Grease up the inside of the steer tube there. Handlebars go in. Six mil Allen key. You know, obviously adjust this to whatever height you want and tighten. Also with this, you're gonna have to look at your bike on the ground with the wheels in place. I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but just make sure your stem is straight with your wheel, obviously, and then, you know, fully tighten this thing down. But this is just the procedure for replacing the headset. So hopefully that did help you. Uh, thank you for watching that. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Have a great rest of your day.